What's up guys? I'm back. Today I've got something that you don't see a lot on this channel. I've got Gran Turismo 7 gameplay. Uh, this is, um, if you've been around here, you have probably heard me say th some things about Gran Turismo 7. I'm not the biggest fan of the game. I have some real problems with it. Um, I can recognize the things that it does well, but also I wish it had been um, a little different than it ended up being. So I'm sure that I'll discuss that at some point. I'll probably do a game slash platinum trophy review of GT7 at some point. But for now, just um, I want you to pay special attention throughout this video to just how beautiful this game is, first of all, because this is a this is an hour long race that we're doing here. This is my first uh, endurance race in GT7, and um, it's beautiful. I mean, the, the time multiplier is 12x here, so you get to see all times of the day throughout this race. And like I'm saying, it, it, is, it is a beautiful game. It looks awesome. Uh, the driving, I think, leaves something to be desired sometimes. And we'll get into that another day. But for now, just know, hour-long race, I'm not expecting much in terms of pace. I'm, I'm not quick. Um, <laughs> I, I don't play this game much. I'm not great at it when I do play it. Um, and I, I just probably need a lot more time and practice to really be decent at all. And a lot of the people in this league are better than I am. So, um, I'll, I'll probably show some more races from this league, but for now, what I just wanted to show you was this first race that we're doing here at spa, the 24 hour layout, um, throughout qualifying, I kind of suffered with people being behind me and this is probably due to the fact that I'm not very fast. People kept catching me, but we're on hot laps here. And it's kind of weird because in F1, you know, you usually, if you have a decent gap, and F1 is what I play primarily, and if you have a decent gap, you're going to be fine. Like, people won't catch you unless you make a colossal mistake, in which case your lap is ruined. But on, on those laps that I was just showing you, I was on a hot lap, and it was a decent hot lap for me, and I was getting caught by cars behind me. So, um, you know, I don't know what else you can do there other than hope that the cars behind you give you more of a gap. But the way this league works is there's something like 25 to 30 drivers, and you have two qualifying lobbies, and then at the end, the top drivers get put in one lobby, and the bottom drivers get put in another lobby. I was put in the bottom lobby here. I was qualified third from last in front of Sitho and Raging Hornet. And I was behind seven cars in this lobby and then another 15 or 16 in the other lobby. So do the math there. I think I was I was qualified something like 24th out of 26th or something like that. But again, that just reiterates what I'm saying. I'm not the greatest at this game. I'm just kind of here to, to vibe a little bit and have a good time and, and hopefully get a good result, but also just have fun and enjoy the race. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. But we've got a lot for you today in this video. This race... A lot happens. It's only an hour long, but a lot a lot goes on. So off the bat, very quickly, I'm getting caught by Sitho behind me and Raging Hornet behind him. I'm on map two here, fuel map two. And I don't know if these guys were on map one or just had setups that were a little less downforce y than mine was, but I was getting gapped on the straights. And I think the guy behind me had probably some slipstream as well, whereas I was a little bit further behind the car in front of me because we kind of started um, sideways going through the uh, through turn one there so uh, suboptimal beginning of the first lap but at least I'm not in last place yet I'm in front of Raging Hornet but then have a little bit of a moment there but fortunately he goes off track behind me too so I'm able to keep my place at least for the moment but I'm quickly losing out to all the cars in front of me you can see that I'm almost seven seconds behind the leader Hotshot Holt at this point and um, and it looks like Sitho and I are, are kind of close here, so maybe a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing opportunity. And we kind of get it, but I, I sort of back out of that just because it's the first lap of a 60-minute race. And I'm not trying to bin it immediately, but of course, you know, I'm still racing here. And, and we actually got a little bit of decent wheel-to-wheel -wheel there, but I, I kind of backed out because it just didn't seem like that move was on. And I didn't want to wreck the car on the first lap, so I live to fight another day, I guess, and, and hopefully we can get him later in the race. Uh, I'm in the Ferrari here. We're, this is a GT3 league, so everybody's in GT3 cars in Gran Turismo 7, and uh, or Group 3 as they call it in the game. I'm in the Ferrari, and my team's primary color is yellow, so you may have seen the car at the beginning of the race when they were kind of panning over the grid, and you'll see it a bit later when I do some pitting as well. But currently, as it stands, you can sort of see the hood of the car uh, out the cockpit there. 
uh, but you can't really see much of the rest. But you'll get a good look at the livery, don't worry. Uh, fast forward a little bit. I'm still in front of Raging Hornet. We get a pass on Joystick Justin, PCGJ Reynolds, who actually spins out there in front of us. And I'm feeling decent at this point. I'm thinking, hey, if these guys keep spinning, then I can just keep uh, going up places and then I'll be fine. Everything will be good. But then uh, lap four, not two laps later, I just went way wide on turn one and struggled to get back on quickly and easily. And just like that, PCG J. Reynolds is back past me again. And fast forward here to later in the lap. And remember, I've still got a two-second lead on Raging Hornet, but I'm dropping back to the guys in front. And going around this corner, I just too much on the curb and just went straight into the wall. And this is the first of what I would consider a comedy of errors that occur during this race. And, um, uh, you know, it could be better. Um, but that was the only big moment I had in my first stint. So that's something at least. You see his pit there. I'm back out for my second stint, and hopefully I can keep it a little bit cleaner because I'm already a minute and a half behind the, the leader and 37 seconds behind the car in front of me. And I'm not trying to run this whole race minutes behind the people in front of me, if, if possible. So the hope is that I can gain some places here by other people making mistakes and me keeping it clean. Uh, but we will we will see what happens. Fast forward a bit to later in my stint. We're on lap 12 here. You see me set a fast lap, 222. And at this point, I'm getting to that stage of the race that I've heard people say is like your overconfidence phase where you put in a couple good laps, a couple consistent laps, you're starting to feel good, and you just you just make a move that is maybe a little unintelligent. I just put too many tires on the curb there and put it straight in the wall. And just like that, we've got damage again, and that's going to compromise lap times. That's going to throw me out of sync. I don't know if it does anything to the tires, but it certainly puts damage on the car, which causes you to be slower. There's no question in my mind. But we finish out the stint. A couple more laps there. I'm sliding around all over the place. Just not good. The tires are kind of cooked at this point also. But I'm out of fuel, so I go in for the fuel. And this is important. I didn't have the radar up. And remember that this is 12x time passage. So 12x normal. So apparently what happened here is while I was in the pits, it started raining. And I, maybe if I looked at the radar, I would have known that. But you can kind of see as I'm coming out of the pits, you start to see that there's rain dropping on the pit lane. I noticed that, and I thought, um, well, I didn't expect that. I mean, it's, it's a random weather race, so that's always a possibility that it rains at some point. But frankly, it came on pretty quickly, I felt like, with the 12x time passage. And I wasn't looking at the radar. I mean, it wasn't, no pun intended, it wasn't on my radar at all. <laughs> To see if it was raining. Uh, again, I don't really play this game much, so I kind of wasn't really thinking about the whole rain aspect, honestly. I was just driving along, just no thought behind my eyes, just just riding. But the end result is that I've put on soft tires on a wet track that is only getting wetter as we try to go around it. And I am, to say the least, in big trouble here. I think that a lot of the other cars on track are also in big trouble. I think with the exception of maybe one or two drivers. Hot shot hold, I'm not positive, but I want to say that he put on intermediate tires. Or somebody else put on intermediate tires, I know. Uh, around the same time that I went in and put on soft tires, probably just looked at the um, looked at the radar and maybe got a better look than I did. And I didn't get any look at all. So, yeah, probably got at least somewhat of a look. And was able to put on the intermediate tires, but I didn't have that luxury. I'm on the softs, and frankly, I can't even keep it on the track. And added to that, added to just the tire offset, or not offset, that's not the right word, the complete tire mismatch between what I should be on and what I am on, is the fact that I, I, I'm i using no traction control. I am not familiar with this game. I'm not familiar with the throttle application. I am... I am decent, I think, at driving in the rain in F1 because I do it a lot more. I play that game a lot more. But GT7, I, I did no rain practice. I was not even thinking, oh, I better be ready for some rain driving at Spa, especially on soft tires. And that's on me, of course. That's my fault. Part of the race is preparing to drive in any condition, right? But I certainly didn't do it. And 
the end result here, as you're seeing, is just me sliding around the track. My outlap is at four minutes and counting, and it doesn't seem like I'm any closer to getting back to the pits than than I was. I mean, it's not like I've gotten into a groove of driving on the wet track and I've kind of figured it out. The track is just getting wetter <laughs> as I go around. So uh, I'm barely, I feel like I'm barely hitting the throttle and just constantly spinning out. So the only way I've found to deal with this is, is apply something like 20, 30, 40% throttle and just sort of coast. But that's what I've tried to do in a couple cases here. I thought this was kind of funny, actually. Watch this. So I'm off the track waiting for these guys to go past. Uh, not so much. They both slide off track. So ev everybody's clearly struggling with this. We're all, I think, in a bad way here. And it, it, this really would have been a good opportunity to make up a lot of places if I'd been intelligent with my tire usage and known that I should have put on intermediates or full wets. I think I could have gained a lot of time here because my outlap is... is going to be over six minutes almost six and a half minutes you can i just fast forwarded there i actually had another spin before i got back to the pits but figured the viewer was tired of seeing it so you're not going to see it anymore but uh, over six minute outlap six minute and 32 second outlap and i really could have gained a lot of time there if i'd been on the correct tires i mean you can see that the guy in front of me is two minutes and 17 seconds ahead uh, assume that the guys in front of him are, are somewhere around the same distance and I really could have made up a lot of time honestly so it's a real missed opportunity and for future races I will do my best to watch the radar and be prepared for that kind of thing but I certainly wasn't here I wanted to show you this sort of me leaving the pits because there was a bit of a moment there where one of the cars spun and this car, who I believe is actually one of my teammates, that might be Hotshot Holt, he barely missed uh, making contact with the other car. So that could have been bad news for him. I just kind of stayed behind him because I was already lapped and I knew he would lap me if I got past him. So I wasn't exactly, I wasn't exactly trying to get by him, I wouldn't say. I was just sort of vibing and trying to regain my footing because I'm on the wet tires here, but I'm still not really comfortable on on the wet track and you can kind of see that here as i just sliding around go off track a little bit and uh, this is certainly better than my out my last outlap was lap 15 when i had the six minute and 32 second outlap but um this is not by any stretch of the imagination a good lap i've obviously been off track and i've been stuck behind a car so i'm hopeful that as i put some more laps in on the wet track i can gain a little bit better feel for it and obviously i'm on the wet tires so it should get better and it does get better i'm i'm fast forwarding through this stint because i don't even know that i really saw any cars i maybe had one blue flag situation here but you can see me gaining a lot of time on raging hornet and i don't know the specifics of that i don't know what was going on with him i don't know if he was on the wrong tires or what but i will say that this last stint i was actually putting in really good laps i finally was feeling comfortable we were going into daytime the track dried up i was just feeling really good putting in decent laps this i think was the best that i drove throughout the whole race which is not that difficult to do given how poorly i drove early in the race but you can see my lap times there on the right just kept coming down so i did a 246 i did 244 241 239 237 and we're going into my last lap here and I hopefully will improve on the 237. That's obviously partly because the track was drying, but also I think it's partly just because I was feeling more comfortable and driving better than I had been earlier in the race. And you can probably even see if you just watch this lap that I'm, I'm just a little more confident on the braking points. I'm just a little more confident on my lines that I'm taking. I think that by the end of the race, by no means was I competitive with the best drivers on track or with the best drivers in either lobby, because again, I'm in the bottom of the two lobbies for this race, but I was feeling better. I was feeling more confident and that just kind of naturally happens, you know, when you do a long race, I don't do a lot of endurance racing with either GT7 or ACC is another game that I could do endurance racing in, but and by the way, I don't even know if you consider this an endurance race because it's a one hour solo drive, but by my standards, I mean, it's a race where I'm in a GT3, I'm pitting multiple times, um, and it's time-based, you know, it feels like an endurance race, so I consider it an endurance race. 
it's not like it's a 24 hour race or even a three hour race or anything but uh it just generally kind of has the vibe of being an endurance race and, and that's kind of the point of this league of this series so anyway i think anytime that you're doing a track for a while like for instance 100 percent races in f1 which i do quite a bit by the end of the race it's almost just second nature of here are my breaking points here's how i need to attack each corner you certainly feel a lot better than you did at, at any point up to this point in the race and that's definitely where i was at this stage of the race we're gonna end up p10 on track it appears i don't think i'm going to be able to catch raging hornet by the end but i will give you a bit of a spoiler alert because you're probably not in the chat where this stuff happens but raging hornet actually got a 30 second penalty after the race so my goal is get as close as i can to this guy but the the result that i didn't know was that as long as i stay within 30 seconds of him i'll get promoted one place and it's it appears like i'm going to be able to do that crossing the line here on my last lap of the race 230 236 and some change so i improved on my last lap as well uh but p10 on track in the bottom lobby but ended up getting promoted one spot above uh because hornet had a penalty so decent race here um <laughs> if you ignore all the mistakes i made all the errors the the rain problem all that just ignore all that it was actually a pretty decent race and um by the end at least i think i was driving pretty well not driving very well in the middle there with the six second outlap or the six minute outlap but kind of comfortable by the end and i think that the good news is that we have a lot to improve upon from this race into the rest of my races in this league so stay tuned hopefully we'll see some better results in future races thanks for watching